Hi there, my name's Zana Voisey. Uh, I'm a clinical fellow and neurology doctor working in Roger Barker's group in Cambridge. Uh, to mark Huntington's Awareness Month, we wanted to do a brief day in the life of a Huntington's researcher, which we hope will be an interesting insight into what we do. Uh, my research is in sleep in Huntington's, which might sound like a slightly odd thing to be researching, um, but it's because we know there's a very important two-way cycle between the two, where we know that in Huntington's and lots of other similar uh, related diseases, neurodegenerative diseases, sleep goes very awry from very early stages and in ways that people might not be fully aware of. And there's growing evidence to suggest that those sleep abnormalities in turn worsen the symptoms um, of Huntington's, but also may accelerate disease process uh, directly. If we could intervene, if we could treat those sleep problems, we might be able to improve symptoms, but also slow down disease progression. So in the next short video, I'll be showing you a little bit of what that all entails, and I hope it's interesting. So good morning and welcome to the morning of the day in the life of a Huntington's researcher. Uh, it's a Tuesday morning, which means that I'm about to head over to our lab meeting. Uh, this is where we all get together as a group for one of us to present the uh, latest updates in their research. And the amazing thing about working in Roger's group is that uh, we're a group that spans not only two diseases, Parkinson's and Huntington's disease, but we span research um, right down from the basic level, meaning cellular, even molecular level research, right up to the high end of clinical research, so clinical trials, but also psychological aspects of a disease like apathy, which is what one of our members is going to be talking about this morning. Okay, so next up, it's time for me to take on my role as a clinical trials assessor. So alongside my own research, I'm uh, also an assessor on the ASA PD trial. And in this trial, my role is to uh, monitor the bloods of the participants to check that everything's running uh, smoothly and safely uh, and to advise on dosage, dosaging increases. And of course, that has to be someone who's not directly involved in the trial as this would unblind the uh, investigators. So that's where I come in. So it's lunchtime now and my next task of the day is to sort out some of the frozen samples that we've got uh, historically from the study. So these are samples that have been stored at minus 80 degrees for many years. Uh, and one of the things we're hoping to assay the samples for, in addition to the melatonin assay that I'll talk more about later, is something called neurofilament light, which is a really exciting biomarker in Huntington's that we think might be linked to disease activity. So if we can see if there's a link between disease activity and sleep parameters, that would add to our argument that the two are linked and important. So that's what I'm going to do now. OK, so it's after lunchtime now, uh, which means it's time to get today's sleep study underway for my research. So I've got two participants coming in today uh, who have very kindly been part of the study right from the very beginning, so for over 10 years ago now. Um, and they'll be coming in uh, for a two-night sleep study. Um, and while they're in with us, um, we do cognitive testing and some psychological questionnaires focused around um, HD symptoms. Um, they also get wired up with lots of electrodes on their head and various muscles um, on their legs and arms. Uh, and this is to look at their brain waves, their EEG electrical signals uh, during their sleep. And from that, we can look very carefully at whether the structure of sleep is, is normal or not. They also have a drip tube in their arm through which we take 10 very small blood samples over the course of 24 hours uh, to look at the hormone melatonin, which um, is a sleep circadian rhythm hormone that allows us to have a 24 hour day night rhythm. So here we are over in the clinical research facility uh, where we're very lucky to have two dedicated sleep labs that offer noise, light and temperature controlled conditions. Uh, our two participants are are getting settled in there. I'm just about to do the cognitive testing with them. Uh, this is one of the sets of sleep kit, which as you can see, includes a lot of electrodes that we'll be placing on a little bit later on. Um, and here we have the kit ready to go with all the melatonin bloods a little bit later on uh, with our very helpful dedicated nursing team. Okay, so it's early evening now and we've completed the cognitive testing and our participants are just getting set up with their drip tubes for the blood tests. 
uh, it's near baby bedtime and I have a little toddler at home uh, who I can't be with for be with for bedtime so I'm just going to go and FaceTime her now before we start getting wired up for the sleep studies. So in a moment I will show you how we set up the sleep studies. Uh, here's the various bits of glue and tape that we use to um, adhere the uh, electrodes to the patient's scalp and along with all the transducers that take those signals out to the computer outside so that we can see the sleep uh, brainwaves. So here we have our first blood samples from our two participants ready to be spun in the centrifuge here to separate the serum from the red blood cells so that then we can send some of the serum to be tested for melatonin. So here they are 10 minutes later, all spun and ready to be now pipetted into special little tubes ready for processing. So that yellow liquid there you can see is the serum that's been separated from the red blood cells which is the layer below. So it's now 11pm, uh, I need to keep my voice down a little bit because as you saw on the monitor uh, my participants are now wired up and trying to get off to sleep. Um, they've just had their second set of blood tests for the night. Uh, this is where I stop for the day and the night uh, and hand over to the nursing staff uh, who continue the blood monitoring overnight, although I keep my phone on in case there are uh, problems. Um, I'll be up at six with the toddler and then back into my morning to see how things are going and setting up for the second day of the study. Um, I hope this has been uh, an interesting insight into what we do and over and out. <laughs>